What's good everybody, it's Andy. Hope your 2021 is rounding off on a positive note. I know mine is. I've got some extra time, so I figured I'd put together a video of some of my favorite buys of 2021. I'm gonna show these in no particular order. They're all things that either made my workflow faster and better, uh, my life easier, or my health better, or something that I just found really enjoyable. If you want more in-depth information on some of these products, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll make a video on that. I won't go too into detail on what these things are as far as specs and stuff like that, but I will touch on what it is, why I bought it, and how it helped me. And I'll leave any possible affiliate links in the description below for all these things that I'm talking about, just in case you find it interesting and you want to get one for yourself. All right, so none of this stuff was sent to me for review. I didn't get paid for any of this stuff. Everything in this video I bought with my own money. So I guess that's my sponsor, myself. Again, in no particular order, we're gonna start off with my latest and greatest, the new MacBook Pro. This baby is the base build spec. The only thing that I changed was the hard drive, so this has one terabyte drive in it. It's the M1 Pro, 16 inch MacBook Pro. I was holding off as long as I could because I didn't want to spend money on a new computer and these new chipsets are brand new. I wanted to wait for the second iteration. But it got to the point with my 2019 completely specced out MacBook Pro with a Core i9, every successive update by Adobe, it just got worse and worse. It got to the point to where I couldn't even put videos on the timeline in proxy cut back to an eighth of a resolution without it freezing up, without it locking up. It just wasn't working and it was frustrating. It was making me not want to edit. I snagged one as a test unit, had zero intentions of keeping it. I really didn't want to have to spend money on this, but after using it in my tests and making some edits with it, the experience was so different and it made me want to edit. My old laptop was getting so slow and so bad that I was getting frustrated sitting in front of the computer just wasting time. This is bringing me hours back into my life. This is making it so much more streamlined and so much faster. Next up, iPhone 13 mini. Back in the day, I had purchased a 7 Max, had it for a week, gave it to Liza, was not happy with it. It's just way too big, way too cumbersome, it's flimsy. With it that big and that thin, it's more prone to damage, especially when I have it in my packs and I'm out riding if I fall or anything like that. And when I go running, it's just easy to pack a smaller phone. That's why I was super stoked when they announced the Mini. Got it? Love it. Fits good in the hand, single hand operation. I don't need two hands to hold it up. The MagSafe is pretty cool. Got some charging options that work really well, as well as this wallet. I love the wallet. Sticks on, everything's slim all in one pocket. And the camera unit on this thing is not half bad. The cinematic video is kind of goofy, but kind of cool. Stills out of it. I mean, you just really can't touch any of the stuff out of the iPhones. There might be better spec phones, but as far as your final product, iPhone just has a certain feel that I prefer over the other phones. Rapid Reboot. Rapid Reboot is a compression system. This is the main unit, the pump, the control center, if you will. This is where you make all your adjustments. They sell leg sleeves, hip sleeves, and arm sleeves. And what that does, you sit down, put the sleeves on, you put into the programming what you want as far as duration, intensity, and a couple other parameters like quickness of how it pumps up and how long it holds. Lots of options. After long rides, after long runs, any kind of strength training where I'm activating a lot of glutes, quads, calves, and stuff like that, I slide these sleeves on. I put them on for about 30, 45 minutes after I'm done with my workout and then in the evening before I go to bed and I feel so much nicer with these. And who doesn't like a nice solid hug? These things just hug your muscles and give them love and you feel great afterwards. Many of you have probably heard of Normatec. This is one of the other players in the market and I went with this because this head unit is much more customizable, you have a lot more control, and I feel that the product itself is better in general. I did a test between this and the Normatec side by side. The sleeve materials, the zipper materials, the hose construction, and the quality of the pressure and the programming, I think is a lot better on the Rapid Reboot. All right, what do we have here? Running shoes? You're Pedal Andy Pedal, you're not Run Andy Run. You know, this weird thing happened about a year ago where everybody was locked inside their homes and no one could go anywhere. I think they call it a, a pandemic. During that time, I was 
trying to find new things to keep myself occupied. I have an Assault Air Runner that I use for sprint intervals. It's a manual treadmill. It's a curved manual treadmill that I find very useful for the way I was using it. Because running intervals on an electric treadmill is pretty hard because you're sitting there jamming buttons, trying to get the speed to change and stuff like that. With the manual treadmill, as fast as I want to go, as quickly as I want to get there, and as quickly as I want to slow down, it's right there with me. Never in my life would I have thought I would run more than a couple miles at a time. And even then, I didn't want to run a couple miles. It was always this 400s, 800s, 100s, sprints. At some point, I decided maybe I'll try this distance running thing. I bought an iPad mount, put it right in front of the treadmill eye level, put my iPad up there one day, I said, hey, I'm going to put a movie on. I'm just going to keep running until I don't want to run anymore. Let's see what happens. Somewhere in there, I found an appreciation for the long run. And in November, I decided to sign up for a marathon and I've been training quite a bit. And these are the two shoes that got me into it. This was the initial shoe that I bought for long distance running because I heard so many good things about Hoka and their cushioning and how it feels. These are the original shoes that I bought to start distance running. These are the Hoka Clifton 6. I got them on discount because they were an older model. Fell in love because the cushioning on these things are freaking amazing. Then I stepped up to the Saucony Endorphin Speed and wow, they're like bikes. You have certain bikes for certain rides. You have certain shoes for certain runs. I instantly got hooked. I signed up for a marathon. I'm running on New Year's Eve. We'll see how that goes. I've got several shoes in my rotation now. Maybe I'll do a video on the rest of them. And since I started training for a marathon, I figured I'd get something to track my runs. I wanted something a little bit more dedicated than my Apple Watch because the battery life on that thing is horrible. The phone you can use too, but I usually have that stowed away somewhere and I can't glance at my numbers. When researching for a tracking tool, obviously you initially go to Garmin right away. I found Koros through watching videos of shoe reviewers and somebody had posted up a review on the Koros Pace 2 and I found it interesting because of one main feature, the battery life. The battery life on this thing is ridiculous. I'll charge it to 100% and since I've been training, I'm running four times a week. I also have my regular gym sesh. I've got it on 24 seven. This thing will last me several weeks before I have to charge it again. You can't do that with the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch, you're charging it every day if you're training as much as I was. So with that crazy battery life and all the functions and features, there's maps, there's navigation, there's a track running mode, there's a trail running mode, where it goes into a 3D mapping of the area and gives you a more accurate readout. Uh, everything put together with the build quality, the feel, it's just proven itself to be a really good tool. Next up, Beats Fit Pro. I've been going through earbuds like crazy looking for the one pair that is the best overall. And when I'm speaking about earbuds, I'm talking about this in-ear style of earbud, true wireless noise cancellation. I've been spending the last few years going through a lot of different brands, different styles, looking for the best one for me. My favorite up until this point had been the Power Beats, the ones, the original Beats that were wireless with the ear hook over the top. Now those were great, but they didn't have noise cancellation. And anytime that I was wearing a helmet or anything like that, the ear loops or the ear hooks would just feel kind of funky at times. I went through the Beats Studio Buds. Those were great, but they didn't have the hook that these have to kind of give you the more secure feel and it didn't have the h1 chip that this one has i've had some from anchor i've tried the bose i've tried jabra i've tried a lot these have been my favorite because one they are super light the fit is really good for my ears the noise cancellation is great it has the h1 chip so you can share audio when we watch tv late at night we don't want to be too loud and wake up the kids. We can hook it up to our Apple TV and Liza and I both get the same audio through our own earbuds and we can each control our volume independently. So these have been pretty awesome. Another thing that I noticed with these being as small as they are, when I'm running with them, I don't get that up and down motion creating any kind of noise or not as much as the other ones because I've had other earbuds that poke out more and when you're running and you're going up and down, they kind of rub a little bit and you, f you feel that and you hear it. Not as much with these, they're pretty awesome. Here's another pair of earbuds, the Aftershocks Aeropex. These things are weird. I wanted to give them a shot because they're bone conductive. So they lay right here on both sides, right in front of your, your ear hole and they vibrate. And that's how you get the audio through these. Initially when I put these on, I was shocked at how bad the sound quality is because since they are just sitting on your temple here and they're vibrating, 
the frequency range is only so much compared to something that's truly in ear with an actual speaker. Only way I can describe it is back in the day when you were too poor to fix your speakers in the car and you blew them out and all you could hear is basically the mids, the highs were non-existent and the lows are just kind of muffled buzzing. That's what these kind of sound like. But why did I keep them? I kept them because one, they actually do enough for me to hear what I need to hear while I'm riding my bike or I'm running in a high traffic area and they allow ambient noise to come in. So I can hear a car way behind me a lot sooner with these than I can with other earbuds because most of the other earbuds I have are noise canceling. Well, these allow in ambient noise a lot better than any of the other earbuds that I have. So one, it's more of a safety issue when I'm in an area that I'm not too familiar with and there's a lot of traffic, I'll use these. Another cool thing about these is they're essentially waterproof. I mean, you can't swim with them, but if you're getting showered on, that's fine. And I inadvertently discovered that now these things are waterproof, which is cool, not swim proof. You can't go swimming with these, but if you're getting showered on, you're getting poured on while you're out riding or running, it's fine. And I inadvertently found out that I like keeping my YouTube videos and my tutorials and stuff running after my workout in my shower. So I'll keep these on while I'm showering and my videos are still running, I'm still learning, be it a video on editing, something inspirational, cat video, you know. So what it lacks in the frequency range and the sound quality, it does have pros in other areas. Next up is my Westside Barbell Reverse Hyper. I got this because I've always had a low back problem, mid back problem. I got rear-ended at a stoplight on my way to school one time and ever since then I've just had issues. Deadlifts, good mornings, Jefferson curls, arches, all those, I do everything. Adding the reverse hyper actually stimulates in a different way and I've found that I get sore less quick when I'm out on the bike for a long extended period of time since adding it to my repertoire. Yeah, so if you have a bad back like I do, I suggest finding a local gym that has one. Typically, you'll find them more at a, a powerlifting gym or a CrossFit gym. Test it out, see if you like it, and hopefully it works for you the way that it works for me. This next piece is called the Iron Neck. I was very curious to see how this piece would work. I did a lot of neck training in boxing. That sounds weird, neck training. I did a lot of neck training when I boxed and when I played football because you're taking shots to the head. Typically you'll see people with a leather harness with chains connected to a plate where they're doing these motions and stuff like that. Iron neck is different in the way it mounts and the way the resistance is formed. It's through bands and it's through the rotation device that's in the unit if you get the Elite where you can control how stiff and how loose it is. It allows you to move your neck basically in all directions while you're doing the programming. I only use it twice a week two, three times max. And even then I'm not going all out. Like I don't do my programming based on the iron neck. That's supplemental work. I just add it in just to maintain some strength. And I immediately found that on rides at races, cause I don't get to ride a whole lot. And typically when I do ride, it's at a race or somewhere different where I'm wearing a full face. And I would find that the back of my neck, the erectors here, we get super fatigued quick because I just hadn't been on the bike and I haven't worn a helmet. I'm not going with a half shell, the full face, even though they're a lot lighter than they used to be, they're still a lot heavier than a half shell. I would find that this right here would just get really fatigued out from being in this position, keeping my head up. After using it for only a few weeks and going to my first race, it was a two day race at Zombie Goat. I felt none of that. And unfortunately I did have to crash test my head. I had a few pretty big spills at Camp Eagle and, and one other time where I destroyed my helmet. And I walked away from that with no head injury and no neck soreness, none at all. And I have to attribute that completely to the iron neck. I also found that it's helped relieve neck pain, neck fatigue, just on my regular day to day because I'm always in front of a computer, I'm always on a device. So tech neck is something that I consciously really fight and I feel like I do a good job, but it only goes so far. Using the iron neck, I feel it's helped my neck realign and keep my shoulders rolled back and I'm just not hunched over all the time anymore. All right, so those were my favorite buys of 2021. I hope you got some insight from this video. I tried to make it as quick as I could. If you want more information on anything specifically, leave a comment down below. Maybe I'll make a more in-depth video of it. Again, I will leave any affiliate links that I can find for that. If you use those, that helps me out because I get a little bit of cutback. Doesn't affect you in any way, but you're contributing to the channel and I appreciate that. Thank you for watching. Expect great things.
be humble, and I'll see you when I see you.